Have you ever wondered why you eventually slow down and come to a stop when skating? Or why heavy boxes are so difficult to push? Or why slides are so much fun? <sighs> Let's find out together in this episode all about friction. Newton's first law states that an object in motion will remain in motion unless acted upon by a net force. As I try to slide these chatter teeth across this table, they eventually slow down and stop. So what's the net force that's affecting the teeth? It's friction. Friction is the force that opposes movement between two touching surfaces and always acts against the direction of motion. Simply put, friction is a force that tries to prevent two surfaces from sliding relative to one another. On the macroscopic scale, the wheels of my skates and the concrete look really smooth. But if we use this microscope lens to zoom in, we see the two surfaces are actually rough and have structures that look like hills and valleys. It's the interaction of those hills and valleys on the two surfaces that causes the force of friction. There is also friction with air or water. The more technical term for friction with air or water is drag. When you drop a leaf, it floats from side to side because air resistance opposes the downward movement. There are two types of friction, kinetic friction and static friction. Static means lacking in movement, action, or change. Static friction is the force of friction between two surfaces not in motion and is the result of molecules on one surface adhering to the other surface. The force of static friction is why it's so difficult to get an object like this large box to start sliding. The box requires more force to start moving than it does to keep moving. Thanks a lot, static friction. Kinetic friction is the force of friction that affects surfaces in motion. Rolling and sliding friction are both considered kinetic friction. When you are pushing a box, the force of friction that resists the motion is sliding friction. Because the surfaces aren't always bonded like they are in static friction, Sliding friction is less powerful than static friction. Rolling friction is the force between surfaces when an object such as a wheel or ball rolls freely over a surface. The friction between the wheels of my skates and the pavement is rolling friction. Rolling friction is weaker than sliding friction, which makes sense because it's much easier to move something on wheels. So if the two surfaces are not sliding, it's static friction. And if the two surfaces are sliding relative to one another, it's kinetic friction. Are there factors that can increase the level of friction? Absolutely. Let's take a look at two ways we can increase the level of friction. If we can increase the amount of force between two surfaces, we can increase the amount of friction. You can try this one. Try to rub your hands together gently. This creates a little bit of friction and a little bit of heat. You should feel your hands warming up. This time, apply more force between your hands. You should be generating more heat because there's more friction. Let's see if we can measure this. With me, I have a wooden block and a spring balance. This spring balance allows me to measure the force required to drag this wooden block across the surface of this table in a unit called newtons. It takes about 7.5 newtons of force to pull this block. Let's do the same thing, but this time let's add this bowl of sand to the top of the wooden block, increasing the force between the two surfaces. It now takes about nine newtons of force to pull the block. What would happen if we changed the type of surface, something with a different texture? It now takes about 11 newtons of force to pull the block, which is a lot more force than it took to pull this wooden block across the smooth surface. And that's because the rough surface is providing that increased amount of friction. We don't realize how much friction affects our everyday life. The fingerprints on your fingers give you just enough friction to be able to grip and pick up things like cups, books, and 
tortoises without them slipping out of your hand. I would never let you slip. Friction is even acting on our skeleton. A joint is formed by the ends of two bones, which are connected by thick tissues. Let's take a look at the knee joint. Thanks for letting me borrow this, by the way. The knee joint is formed by the lower leg bone and the thigh bone. The ends of the bones are covered by cartilage, which provides a smooth, almost glassy surface. The joints also produce a fluid called synovial fluid that reduces friction and wear. Too much friction in our joints would be a bad and painful thing. You want this back? Finding the right amount of friction seems to be the goal. Too much friction inside of a knee joint or inside of an engine can be disastrous, but not enough friction on a rainy day or on a pair of skates doesn't work either. So the next time you go down a slide or enjoy a day of skating at the park, be sure to thank friction. And if you want to learn more science, you can check out this video next.